Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a discovery of a new exoplanet, a planet somewhere out there in the galaxy, but using a very very original method we've never used before. And this could allow us to discover a lot more planets out there. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So, as of today, we've confirmed over 4100 different exoplanets, including, of course, the most likely biggest discovery to date, the system known as TRAPPIST-1, with seven different terrestrial or Earth-sized exoplanets orbiting around it, several of which are in a habitable zone. But there are a lot of exoplanets that are very, very different from anything we have in the solar system. However, there are things we can learn from the solar system in order for us to discover these unusual planets. And back in 1960s, the scientists uh, looking at Jupiter discovered something very unusual about it. They were witnessing these unusual radio waves, radio emissions, and these emissions were surprisingly in sync with one of its moons, the closest large moon known as Io. This is also the most uh, volcanically active moon in the solar system and has quite a lot of really interesting things happening on the surface here. As you can see, it's filled with various lava plains and also has a somewhat thin atmosphere produced by the volcanic emissions that actually does interact with Jupiter itself. But why is it that there were these radio waves coming from the system and what exactly was happening here? Well, it took uh, some time, it took a few decades actually to try to understand what's happening here, but finally the scientists were able to explain this. Now, what's really important to understand here is that these radio emissions are really, really, really powerful. They're actually uh, as bright in our night skies as the radio emissions coming from our own sun. So this was something that was uh, quite intriguing and the scientists were waiting for a few probes to get here in order to find out what's really happening. Well, after a few probes that visited this system, specifically the Voyager probes and the Pioneer probes, scientists were finally able to answer what's happening here. Turns out, as the volcanoes erupt on Io, they release quite a lot of gas that eventually kind of settles around the planet creating this atmosphere that then releases certain electrons. And these electrons can then start interacting with the magnetic field of Jupiter itself. So this is like having a negative charge move around the magnetic field which will then generate current. But here, this current will then transfer toward the magnetic poles of Jupiter and this will generate quite a lot of wave activity. These waves are not very powerful, but right at the actual poles, when they actually kind of merge all together, it does generate a relatively powerful emission, almost like a laser-like emission that can be seen from really far away, including, of course, Earth. And this is what we were witnessing for so many years, and this is how the mystery was resolved. And what's really important here is that these emissions, depending on the frequency and depending on the actual power, will also tell us quite a lot about the actual planet itself. In other words, by reading the frequency and the power of these emissions, we can learn a lot about the planet and also the moon itself and um, thus analyze them remotely by just getting these signals. And it just so happens that the brilliant scientists from Netherlands using the so-called LOFAR or essentially a series of radio telescopes that are quite powerful to detect really really weak signals from really far away were able to detect an unusual signal coming from this system right here known as GJ1151. And as you can see, it's located in the Orsa Major constellation. And as you probably guessed, it's essentially a very similar type of a signal we get from Io as well. So it's kind of like a laser-like radio emissions um, in around 150 megahertz of frequency. As always, you can learn more about the actual discovery and the study in the description below. And so using approximately 20,000 different radio antenna that were all connected in this system, these scientists were able to discover that this system, known as GJ1151, had an Earth-like planet, or at least Earth-sized planet, orbiting the star anywhere from one to possibly five days. It's still not really accurate in predicting the actual orbit, but as we discover more and more of these planets, I'm sure this technique will be refined and become a lot more accurate. Right now though, just discovering this planet using this method is really incredible. And essentially how they found it was by looking at the interactions of the aurora, the so-called northern and southern lights. These aurora will always produce an extremely powerful radio emission, and this radio emission will very likely be visible from really, really far away. And because of the success of this technique around GJ1151, these scientists believe that they'll be able to discover a lot more of these exoplanets in various other systems as well. But you do need to have a very specific type of a star and a very specific system. Now, in our case, 
in the solar system, the Sun is really far away from every major planet, so there is no actual star-planet interaction. In other words, because our Sun is not particularly powerful magnetically and because our planets are much much farther away, more specifically this far away, this is where Earth would really be in comparison to the Sun, and here's how this compares to the previous orbit, all of this means that um, there is really no way to detect Earth or any other planet uh, from outside of the solar system using this technique. However, other star systems, such as of course TRAPPIST-1, are extremely magnetic. This star here is a lot more magnetically powerful than our Sun is, and the planets here do experience a lot of star-planet interaction. We're still not entirely sure how any of this affects these planets, they might actually become extremely dangerous to live on, but we do understand that because of this interaction and because of the way that the aurora are generated, it's very likely that pretty much most of these planets will produce these very powerful radio emissions. And most importantly, using this technique we'll also be able to even find planets in the habitable zone of various red dwarfs. So in this case, because the orbits here will probably take maybe around 5, 6 or 7 days in the habitable um, part of the star system, and in case of TRAPPIST-1e it takes it about 6 days to go once around the star, this definitely creates a very good opportunity for us to discover a lot of various habitable planets around red dwarfs that would be invisible to us otherwise. And all of this simply because the star itself will very likely have very powerful aurora that's definitely going to produce a lot of radio emissions, really powerful radio emissions visible from pretty much everywhere in the galaxy. And since red dwarfs are the most common types of stars in the galaxy, this is probably going to be an extremely easy way for us to discover a lot of exoplanets out there. Unfortunately though, because these planets are producing so many radio signals and because they're essentially interacting with the star itself, we don't really think they will be habitable to humans. They are nevertheless are going to be really interesting for research purposes. And also because the closest planet to us, Proxima Centauri, is also a very similar planet to the one discovered, it's probably going to be a very interesting way for us to discover more about it. If we try to listen to these radio signals, we might be able to learn a lot more about the closest planet to us. And as we learn more about Aurora on Jupiter and of course Aurora on our own planet Earth, we'll definitely be able to answer even more questions about these exoplanets simply because by studying our own aurora we'll be able to understand what's happening here as well. But there's one thing I need to mention though. This study is still only the first such study and we still need to confirm their discovery. More specifically, we need to use other methods to confirm if this planet even exists or if something completely different is happening here in order to cause these unusual observations. Either way, I'm sure in the next few years someone will either confirm or disprove this idea and if this is correct then we'll definitely be able to discover a lot more really awesome exoplanets out there. More importantly, this will allow us to see and detect even closer exoplanets around nearby systems. There are a lot of red dwarfs near us, and finding planets around them would be quite interesting. But on that note, once we discover more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then though, thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.